Hello there and welcome back to Beauty Bee, where today I am going for my second attempt at filming this anti-haul. Yesterday I filmed it and when I sat down to edit the footage, there was no sound. So it was 40 minutes of... 40 minutes of that. Oh my goodness. So this time, I'm trying to just speed through this because I I don't want to spend 80 minutes just filming for what will end up being a 15 minute video, probably. So, quick disclaimer, obviously this is just my opinion. You can have different opinions. I give you permission. And um, I don't have anything against the creators whose collabs are in this video. Is that enough of a disclaimer? Cool. Let's start. I think I'm going to work from things that I could understand why people would want, things that just don't appeal to me personally, up to things that admittedly I don't understand why anyone would want them. Starting with the Annette's Makeup Corner by Menagerie Cosmetics. This is the Serenity palette. It is a super bright rainbow palette that makes perfect sense for Annette's channel, but I have no idea how I would use some of the shades in this palette. The one that really sticks out to me is this orange. It's called Monarch. It looks to me like it is a bright, true orange with maybe a little bit of a golden shift to it. And it's a pretty shade. Orange isn't my favorite, but I have no idea what you're supposed to use that shade with in the rest of the palette. It doesn't seem like there's a matte that would really work with it. And that's kind of how I feel about several of these different shades. It's, it's like, it seems like if you pick one shade, it seems like there's often one or two obvious mattes or shimmers that would go with it but otherwise I would feel like my options were somewhat limited. I don't think that I could get a wide variety of looks out of this palette, and for me it's missing some neutrals. While the individual shades in this palette are very pretty, I don't think that I could get enough complete looks out of it to justify the purchase. Next up we have another collab. This is the Life's a Draft palette by Ofer Cosmetics with Samantha March. There are actually two pieces to this collection. There's a gloss set, which is fine, whatever. And then there's this palette. This palette doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. First of all, the, these top two rows of eyeshadows almost look like a desaturated photo, but I think that's just what they look like. There are a couple of shades that are too similar. I really don't think that the three Movi mattes all needed to be included. I think you could have taken out the middle shade and had no fewer potential looks with this palette. I don't understand how this red fits in with the mauves. That's just not a color combination I would go for. And I can't see myself ever using that warm of a shimmery bronzer with this very purpley mauve eye look. It just doesn't make sense for me and how I do my makeup, though I can see how someone who liked super neutral makeup might be into it. Next we have these Pat McGrath kits. I don't really care one way or the other about the glossy blue eyeshadow kit. I mean, I guess if you want a glossy blue eyeshadow, there's a, a kit that is directed exactly at you. What I don't understand are these glittery red lip kits. I feel like Pat McGrath Labs has released several of these, and I don't understand how there is that much of a market for these. I can't imagine myself or anyone that I know wearing this and there's a big part of me that assumes that 90% of these that get sold are just two YouTubers who make one video or Instagrammers who make one or two posts. 
using these kits and then never touch them again. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a huge market for these glitter lips that I just don't see, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand this at all. I could get it if there was one kit, but she's coming out with two kits right now, and I know for a fact that she's had one previously, so what do I know? This seems bizarre to me, but I want to preface this by saying that this gloss is actually really cute. This is the Winky Lux Neapolitan Gloss. It's $18, which I think is too much for a lip gloss in general, but also I cannot imagine how this is going to stay nice as you actually use it, because every time you dip in that doe foot applicator, you're going to go through the pink, the white, and the brown. So especially as you start getting to the end of the tube, isn't that just going to look disgusting? All the colors are going to be mixed in together. I feel like the big selling point of this and a lot of Winky Lux products, if we're being honest, is that it's really cute. But I just don't think that the cute factor is going to last on this. And for $18, it, it needs to be real cute until that last drop, okay? I'm moving so much faster than I did last time. I'm, I'm so happy with this. The next item we have is from It Cosmetics, and it is their Flawless flower powder brush. I remember yesterday when I filmed this, I had to try that name about six times before I got it right. But this time, first try, a. Eh? And this is a rose shaped powder brush. Now, I have heard that IT Cosmetics brushes are actually pretty good. However, what I have heard time and time again is that the IT Cosmetics for Ulta Beauty brushes are not the same quality. And guess what this belongs to? This is another item very similar to the Winky Lux, where I don't think anyone is buying this because they actually think it will be the best performing powder brush ever. I think the I think that the motivation behind most people's purchase of this would be that it's really cute. And I worry that you're going to lose the rose petals on the handle over time, which would be a bummer. I also don't know how nice that rose is going to stay over time, which again, for a 36, sorry, $35 brush, you know, a steal compared to what I thought it was at 36, I, I couldn't justify that. Again, it would just need to stay pristine for a lot longer than I think this item actually would. Natasha Denona recently released two new five pan palettes. One of them is actually pretty lovely, the Ayana palette. It is a cool toned neutral palette. It seems like it goes quite a bit deeper than the mini glam, which cool. This looks really lovely. A plus. On the other hand, they brought out this Jubilee palette, which has three shades that look exactly like the um, banana split ice cream bars that I get sometimes from my grocery store. A black, why? I do not know. And a minty blue, shimmery blue. What are you supposed to do with this? I don't understand this palette at all. Also, I think it's just ugly. I I think it looks like they tried to make like an Easter egg themed palette and just failed. Now they released these for BoxyCharm, which, you know, kind of made sense that it was a pretty ugly Natasha Denona palette once you realized that they were putting these out exclusively for BoxyCharm. No brand is putting like their A game in an exclusive to a 20-ish dollar a month subscription service. That just doesn't happen. But can you imagine? this? I don't think this was one of the choice items. If you just got this Jubilee palette instead of the Ayana one, I would, I would have been so upset. Goodness. Tasha Denona, what are you doing? The next few, next few items go in the category of collaborations that I cannot believe anyone asked for. And
and the first one we're going to look at is Tetris by NYX. Now, first of all, isn't this like the third Tetris collection that's come out? Are they offering their licensing for like 50 bucks or something? Could I afford to make a Tetris collection if I wanted to? I don't understand. There, there can't be a huge demand for Tetris collections. Also, the products are just not interesting. You've got these butter gloss sets, which I mean, when this eventually goes on sale for like 60% off, because again, there's no way there's that much demand for these Tetris sets, might be a good way to score a butter gloss for a good price. The eyeliner set, again, they put out this same eyeliner set or minor variations thereof for everything it feels like. And then this palette, this palette, first of all, is huge. It's 80 pans and it looks like it is physically quite large also. I would guess based on the images that I'm seeing that it is about yay long and yay high. And I'll admit that usually I kind of roll my eyes when I hear people complaining about storing pieces of makeup because usually I feel like the solution is to just have a little less and then you wouldn't need to worry as much but this I could understand like I have no idea where I would put this I don't have that much makeup I don't want anything to take up that much space horizontally on my desk that no absolutely not and on top of it the colors aren't even that pretty like if you're going to make a Tetris collection why are you missing these really bright blues and yellows and pinks that at least the versions of the game that I've ever seen have in them? They're, they're not this muted, somewhat grungy color scheme. I don't understand this at all. I will admit that I have never been a big fan of Friends, so I didn't get the hype even with the first round of this collaboration, but why do we have, need three rounds of Makeup Revolution and Friends? That's so unnecessary. All of it looks just junky and cheap. If you want merch from Friends or from whatever TV show, I feel like you could spend your money a lot better and get a t-shirt or a poster or something decent, something that's not just so junky. This whole collab just looks half-baked. It looks like someone with a passing knowledge of the series could have made this. I could have made this, I feel like, and I have watched two episodes of Friends since 2004. I think that's when the show ended. And there's one particular item that just skeeves me out. This is the Chandler sheet mask. It has a raw chicken with sunglasses on it. Now, I have a weird thing about food anyway, but oh, I just get goosebumps even thinking about it. That's so gross. Why would anyone want to put that on their face? I mean, obviously, it's just a sheet mask with stupid print on it, but it's Ew. Why? Who wants this? Now, moving on from that mess, we have the Coach by Sephora collaboration. Why do we need a six inch-ish tall palette that looks like a bag charm? Now, bag charms are not my thing. They never have been. But Coach makes some really beautiful items. I really like the poppy theme that they have going on through a lot of their bags. I have many times considered purchasing one of their poppy bags uh, secondhand, but so I don't understand why they chose to hone in on this anatomically incorrect T-Rex, a shark that looks like it's been beached, and a unicorn. What, what four-year-old is making decisions over at the Sephora by Coach? 
where? <laughs> like, what, what is this? Now, last but certainly and not least in this anti haul, we have a product that truly baffles me. This is the Fenty Gloss Balm Dip. First of all, why would you call any product dip? What is the single most disgusting habit a person can have? I mean, probably not chewing tobacco, but it, that's pretty close to the top of the list. And this is so dumb. Why would I want a clip-on lip gloss that I'll then have to put my finger into to apply? I don't want to put my finger into lip gloss in the first place. I definitely don't want to have it with me on the go, like on the belt loop of my jeans or something, because I that that is just tempting me to put it on when my fingers are filthy. And no, we don't need to do that. I feel like this is not aimed at adults. I cannot imagine an adult woman or man or other saying, you know what I really need is a lip gloss that I can clip onto my bag and take with me. Who I can see this being marketed at is a very particular 14 year old who uh, has a parasocial relationship with Emma Chamberlain and wears um, like t-shirts that either their mom got at uh, like a tourist trap a couple miles away from the Grand Canyon in 1997 or from Urban Outfitters for like $60 and there's nothing in between. Um, I can see her owning this. Anybody else? Absolutely not. Let me know what you think of my list. Um, do you have any of these? I would be very interested to know if any of these are actually surprise hits or hidden gems. I admit I don't have high hopes for any of them, but you know what? I am willing to be surprised. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you would like to see the more positive version of this chatting about new releases video, I will link my most recent up in the cards. On the other hand, if you are like me and thrive on negativity, um, I will link a playlist of my more negative or conscious consumerism videos up there as well. Thanks again for watching, and I really hope I'll see you next time. Bye!